Dear roommates, it is the last day of February, and although this year has just begun, we are scraping all of our New Year's resolutions. Before the year started, we sat down and came up with a list of all the things we wanted to achieve. We had a carefully crafted list of the amount of money we wanted to make, the diets we wanted to have, the workout routines we wanted to do, and the friends we wanted to make. Everything was set and we were in motion, but life suddenly crashed into us when we heard that my mother had passed away. The first thing that went through my head was, did she live the life she wanted, not the goals she achieved? Grief has a way of bringing things into perspective and leaving you no choice but to be honest with yourself. And to be honest, looking at that piece of paper with those goals we had written down felt suffocating. Not that there's anything wrong with having goals and achieving them. The things we had written down just felt dishonest. Did we want money? Of course. Did we want healthy diets? Definitely. But these goals felt too impersonal. When we created them, we were too focused on the people we thought we should be and denied the people we actually are. We realized that just having New Year's resolutions was not enough. These were the same resolutions we had had every year and there seemed to be no change. And to think that my life's focus would be primarily to make money, eat healthy and lose weight was depressing. We didn't want to live our lives for a perceived desired outcome. We wanted to live every day. We decided to shift our mindset from goals and plans to processes. Before I was medically diagnosed with depression, I lived my life trying to cure it. I went from one fad to another, hoping that I would get the chance to live a normal life and feel the way that others do. But after I was diagnosed, I realized that there was no cure, no definite end to depressive episodes and sleepless nights. I was sad, but this realization was key to my change in perspective. Instead of looking for cures, I found ways to cope. Instead of being upset at myself for not being conventionally productive during my dark days, I created a list of things that I would try to do that I knew would help make me feel better, such as taking a shower or reading a book. And if that was all I did that day, I counted it as a win. Instead of saying I want to be happy, I did things that would make me happy. The amazing thing about goals is they help you focus on the outcome 
which is important, but processes help you focus on the impact. So yes, we wanted to make money, but what impact would our hustle have on ourselves and others? We had to think about whether that way of making money was in tune with who we are. We must decide how we are valuable rather than how valuable we are. So here is how we turned our resolutions into processes. Number one, create a space that encourages productivity. Before setting out to create this space, we had to learn which times we were most productive rather than forcing ourselves to be productive. Once we were aware of our mental clock, before that time, we made sure we were charging our devices, that our spaces were clean, and we had enough energy drinks and snacks to last us our session. Having everything set for our productivity helped us settle into being productive more easily. Number two, listen to our bodies when it comes to food. Part of adulting is constantly having to ask yourself, what do you want to eat? The trick we learned is we have to ask ourselves what we would need to eat. Our thoughts shifted from I want to eat healthy to how can I make this healthy. We learned how to make most of our favorite takeout foods so that we can have more control over what goes into the food. We refuse to stick to a strict diet because life is too short to be forcing yourself to eat things you don't like. Number three, maintaining relationships. The strength of a relationship is not based on the paperwork or the title. It is based on how you maintain it. We need to be able to define what a healthy relationship looks like for each connection instead of assuming certain behavior dependent on a title. Communicating by genuinely checking in on how the other person is doing and being present really helped us maintain this relationship as a safe space. Having a healthy relationship shouldn't be a goal, but a habit. Thank you to our key roommates who bought us coffee this week. You can become a key roommate by following the link in the description and buying us some coffee. Even though we are very much in the pits and a lot of things have changed, wherever we go, because of our processes, we are able to adapt. A good traveler has no fixed plans and is not intent on arriving. But anyways, in the end, we all die. Love, Love Rumi. Rumi. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Thank you for watching. Bye.